growing up, um, going to uh, food banks and standing in line waiting for government cheese and then seeing that there was a better way out. I started working at a local McDonald's at 15 years old and that first paycheck um, showed me that uh, I could do a better job taking care of myself than the government ever had. Lauren Boebert, little miss hypocrite. That's the Colorado Congresswoman and MAGA Mean Girl discussing her new book, My American Life, and part of her story that many of us might not know about. Sure, we're familiar with her QAnon dabbling, her open carry restaurant Shooter's Grill that's now a Mexican restaurant, which is just delicioso. We might also know that she was once booked for disorderly conduct at a music festival and other classic white girl sh**. But it turns out that Lauren Boebert was at one point on food stamps and received government assistance. And to be clear, there's no shame in any of that. That is, unless you belong to a political party hell-bent on taking that assistance away from others. This is the classic climb the ladder and then kick it down behind you origin story of far too many people in power. Republicans are now aiming to cut SNAP benefits, the supplemental nutrition assistance program that helps over 40 million Americans not go hungry. Why was the program good enough for you as a starving child, but not good enough for starving children today? What, back in the day, kids' stomachs weren't woke? Now, mind you, this month, the SNAP benefits that increased because of the pandemic are already being cut, a move that could possibly throw 4.2 million Americans into poverty. So Biden's hands aren't clean here either. But since the president got the GOP to swear that they wouldn't cut Medicare or Medicaid, Republicans got to cut something. Their donors paid for that. And so they're gunning for food aid to families. So this is the party that wants to bring the Bible back into government. Yeah, because we all remember the parable of Jesus taking food out of a hungry baby's mouth to teach it the value of an honest day's work. That was in Luke chapter... But what about that McDonald's paycheck at age 15 that Bobert is really proud about? Yeah, why not just rely on a job at a massive billion dollar corporation? Well, it turns out that McDonald's is one of the top five employers in this country where employees are on federal benefits like food stamps and Medicaid. That's according to a 2020 study commissioned by Bernie Sanders. So if workers have jobs but still need to go on food stamps to eat, then who's actually relying on the government? It sounds like instead of paying a better wage with benefits, these corporations are the ones who are banking on handouts. But socialism for the rich and incorporated, right? So if you can't rely on the government or a corporate job, what can you rely on? <gasps> a man. Republicans at the end of the day want women in particular to rely on men and to have their unpaid overwork job be raising kids, wanted or unwanted, as if that weren't an incredibly dangerous prison of its own. For example, Lauren Boebert. She's a mom of four who dropped out of high school and her husband not only exposed himself to two women at a bowling alley, which like, strange choice, bro, but he's also been arrested for domestic violence against her. Lauren Boebert. Now look, I guess she's risen above that and honestly kudos to her for somehow wrangling herself into a position of power she's breathlessly unqualified for. But what about others like her? How are they supposed to raise four kids with an abusive flasher of a spouse? Become a congressperson and get $170,000 a year to take benefits away from other people? I guess that's one way out. Lauren Boebert, like so many cruel conservatives, lives in a hot box of her own hypocrisy. And has no problem that the rest of us are just struggling to breathe. Marjorie Taylor Greene proves Republicans love going to war. Watch that video from me next on Rebel HQ. And if you like me, follow me on all the things at Franny Fio and listen to my podcast, The Bituation Room.